In this video, we're going to focus how we can use async fetch and fetch the data which we have from a JSON file and create this wonderful chart here where you can see the national debt of every country here that we have all coming from this specific file here. So let's start to look how to do this. So let's start to look at how we can use async fetch with chart.js and let's explore some economic principles behind that, more specifically the national debt. So what I'm going to do here, first of all, is I want to grab here the code, which is on chart.js, 3.com, getting started, this specific link here, which you can find in the description box as well. Once you're on there, scroll down and just copy this entire chunk of code here. If you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here that explains it all. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste this all in here. And once I have that, I will cut out this title here, put the title in there. Save, refresh. Here we are. And just a quick note, I'm using a local host here because for fetch, we need to use a local host or else it won't work. So what is the file we're going to work with? In this case, I have a file prepared and you can find it as well in the comment section. I will make sure the link is in there. So this file is basically the data with the JSON and it has all every country with the value and the value is basically the percentage in percentile. So it's uh, a thousandth of a percentage, basically how it's calculated. And then here the population here as well. Although I won't be using the population. I'm going to look at these two here of every of our every country that we have. So scroll down here and then just go in here. And we're going to say here is async, because what we want to do is we want to load something, but we want to make sure it's asynchronized, meaning if there's other files or other JavaScript code that needs to be loaded that is outside of the async, those can be loaded before this is done loading. So that's no problem at all. So this will load on its own. So it is an async function. And then we're going to say here, we can say yeah, national debt. And we put in here, there we are. And then what we want to do is where is the source or the file we want to grab? Well, in this case, we want to grab this file here, which is the local host, chart.js and then slash data.json of course it depends on where you have stored your item so what i'm going to do here now is constant and i will just say url or data doesn't matter but in this but this is of course a string value once we have that we're going to the next one and that is the response so we're going to say constant and a response so you can give it anything you want the response is a very appropriate term now what we're going to say here, await uh await make sure you spell that correctly await response so we're waiting for response and we say say here uh oh sorry not awaiting response we're wait we are waiting for response but we want to say fetch url basically go and get the data from this and fetch is just like when you throw a bone and you have a dog and you say to the dog fetch and the dog will run after the bone and come back with it with the bone and basically what we're doing here is we're throwing out the information that we want and we're waiting for response that it will give us the information that we desire back. So now what I want to do here is I go to the constant, let's say here data points equals await. So we're waiting for the response or whatever we have fetched here. And then we want to make sure that this is uh, JavaScript readable. So we're going to say here JSON. There we are. So response.json. So it will parse into a readable format for us in JavaScript. So once we have all of that, what I want to, of course, to check, do we get all the data that we want? So what I'm going to say is a console log, data points, and then what I will also do is a return of the data points here. We're doing that because later on, if you want to use this or continue on with the data, we can do that because we have the return. If we don't do this, the data that is being extracted, it has been forgotten. So let's save this now. Refresh, open up this, and then let's see. All right, interesting, it doesn't work yet. So let's start to look what is going on. All right, so after checking, of course, everything is fine, but what is the issue here? I didn't activate the function yet. So we didn't trigger it yet. I'm going to trigger it later on. So if I'm going to do this, save this now, you will see we trigger the function, and then we get all of the information here. In total, we have 184. Uh, array data points here and you can see here the first one is Japan and we get all of this information here 
which is all very nice but of course I want this now in our chart here so let's start to work on that so what I'm going to do here now is and this we can be comment out so we don't have to trigger that because what I'm going to do now is use a uh, trigger of this function immediately by just copying this I'm going to say here national debt parentheses and dot then so basically because this is the reason why I have the return here so we hold this data in memory now we can continue on with this data and I'm going to say here then I'm going to just say here data points and we're going to work on here so what I'm going to do here now is well let's say we want to extract in our case what I want to extract is specifically the country name let's look at that how where is that if you see here this array if I open up you can see your country and then we want the value I don't want the population this number is not important for us but this one will be in the country so let's copy the country so how do we do this so we say your data points and make sure you spell this correctly and within here I'm going to say here constant country equal and then what I want to do is I want to grab the data points here let's say a dot map because we are now we have all this data but I want to map or use a map array method to loop through this data here and basically only extract one thing in this case I only want to extract the country so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say this and then map and then what I'm going to say here for every data point which is basically a single item in here which we can almost call like a country but it's basically index 0 1 and 2 and 3 etc etc now I want to extract only the country itself so let's copy that so I'm going to say here we're going to do the following make sure you have this fat arrow function expression and then what I'm going to say here data point dot country so I want to grab this one here how do we grab this well if I do now a console log so I can show you so you will understand if I save that refresh there we are we now we get all of the country the, the full list of countries here that looks absolutely phenomenal so of course I don't want to have a console log what I want to do is I want to return this value so what will happen is if we return this this country constant variable has now the return variable here so if I copy this and if I say your console log let's see if that works here save refresh all right of course it doesn't work yet because it's loading asynchronous meaning this loads this is still in process while this is being loaded immediately so that's why while this is still in process it gives an error so we cannot do it like this and what we need to do is we just need to be within here so I'm going to move this you cut this out put it in there save refresh now we get every country on the list here in a nice proper array so now we have this one and what I want to do now is because we have all this data here as well I'm going to just cut out this entire item and just move that in there so let's cut this out move it in here give it a proper indentation there we are copy this put it in here so if I save this refresh now we have every country here and now it's time to work with the national debt and then we're going to look at the economics behind that so what we're going to do here is we can just say here the same thing with another constant but then here we can say in this case if I open up this let's open up this item here there we are we want to grab the value not the country but the value in this case so I'm going to say here we have a value but let's say here this is a percentage and I don't want to use data or something like that because data is already being used here so that will create all confusion and errors so let's say here percentage data that's probably a very nice description of it or country data or country percentage whatever so then what I'm going to say here data points dot map we have to do again another map and we're going to say here, the data point for every data point we're going to grab here the following we should say here return very straightforward data point dot what exactly again value so once we did this we can save that and then what I want to do is I want to copy this and just put it in here and what I'm going to change here is this should be national debt that's probably a proper term national debt save refresh 
Alright, so now we get all of this, but of course, look at this, you see 250,000, you might say, well, that is, is that a number? So I thought it was percentages, and that is correct, it is percentage, but it's now working with a thousand of points. So I don't want this, what I want to do, I want to cut this all out, or cut all of these out, and only have the percentage itself. So for example, here, apparently Japan has a huge national debt of 237%. And let's say, let's say we want to have not only 237, but 237.5%. So let's get it on one decimal point exact. So how to do this? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to just copy this, because this is the data. And I'm going to say a constant, and let's say here, percentage, uh, percentage, I guess, clean or something like that. It doesn't matter. We can give you anything you want. Percentage, or maybe percentage, I guess, clean. Percentage clean, for example. I'm just going to use that one. So what I want to do here is I want to say this is equal to that. And then what I want to do is here divide by 1,000. And then we could even do here, once we have this, because now we have that one, I will return this. If I save this, refresh, you'll see now it's 200, but it is 237 and then 0.541. And this could give you still a lot of confusion depending on the country you are. Is this in thousands or is this in, in points? So meaning it's 250. So what we want to do here is we want to convert this again. We're going to say here dot to fixed to how many decimals? One single decimal. Save this, refresh, and there we are. So now we have this, and now here comes the question that is very interesting. Because we see this here, and maybe it's still quite hard to see. Let's see if we can maximize this a little bit more. We can see here, here the percentage, and or the amount. And this amount is of course relative. What this truly means, it means relative to what the country is earning uh, on its uh, GDP, or GNP, or its gross national product. So this is very important. So how much are they earning and percentage on that is how much they borrow compared to that. So you might say, well, Japan is in a very bad situation. Most likely it is because it has, it borrows over 230% more than what they earn on a yearly basis. So that is a very good way to look at it. However, this is not the most suitable way because we have heard of the 80-20 rule we might say, well, or not even 80-20 rule. That will be a nice exercise here as well. But you might have heard here, well, well this is just a snapshot. And let's look at it. This is a snapshot here. And this might be very much, but perhaps they're making a product and they're selling that for in the near future for a very high profit and going to earn it all back. Of course, that might be, that might not. We don't know, of course, based on what we see here. What will eventually give us a better view is the historic uh, events as well, or financial numbers as well. Because with that, we can start to understand, are they able to pay back? Because that's the real thing. Are they over leveraged or under leveraged? Or, well, basically that's the case. So if you wonder what is over leverage, over leverage would mean, are they borrowing that much and earning far lesser, so they're not able to pay back their debt? And that is probably for most of the countries most likely the case. But of course, we can check this by historic items. And that will be a nano exercise as well. We're going to look at the financials of that one. However, what I want to say, and this is the last one to, as, a, as a closing point, if you've heard of the long tail and the short tail, you have heard that 80-20 rule is a very common one and it's very close to the long tail and the short tail, which just says that 80% of all, or this part here basically, that's the 80%, this here would be equal to just the 20% here. Is that really true? I cannot say. That is a probably nice exercise to explore as well. That will be for the next video to do explore that specific one. However, looking at this national debt, one thing is clear is that uh, it is... So what is very clear here is one thing is that almost uh, definitely more than 50% of the countries on this list here, and there are 187 countries on this list, has borrowed more, or at least 50% or more than than all other countries, or at least compared to the other side of it. So that means that most countries are borrowing more than 50% of it, and it's shocking. Anyway, next video, we're going to look at the 80-20 rule and see how we can apply that with 
our items here. 